So let's have some fun thinking about design. Design of spaces. In this case, I'm in a little town. And I like this town. Uh, it's kind of busy. It's bustling. They sell lots of crafts and things. Not super far from Morelia. And this is the plaza that I'm in. So this is a place we're going to evaluate. And I'm not criticizing the town. You know, most of these towns uh, were laid out by the Spanish. And they've got the church over there and a little park thing and then this plaza. But I don't think a lot of planning went into things after there were political changes. And some of the plans may have not been that perfect to begin with. But being a kind of utopian guy that I am, I want to think, what's the ideal way to do a plaza? Because I love the idea of plazas. And so there's a couple things. One is I like the park and the church nearby. Uh, I think that there should always be a park and a plaza next to each other. And so there should be people, uh, like spaces for people to walk. And also lots of spaces for people to be in the shade and with a lot of plants. Those two can be mixed however you want. You could have them be kitty corner to each other. So the noise of the plaza didn't interfere with the peacefulness of the park as much. So, you know, that could be a park over there. Now you'll notice here they're building up. So some people are putting in second stories. And uh, they're fairly narrow not super great design most of it is one story actually, but no, it's a mix it's a mix and so I think from the very beginning you should plan your whole plaza to have first off portales a portal is a porch that comes out into the plaza you know next to the road or whatever and uh, those should be big enough so that you can be out of the Sun and the rain because in this climate, unless it's a really pleasant overcast day, you're either in the sun or the rain, and you don't want to be in either one that much. The sun here, it's very strong, we're at a high elevation, and these portals that they have here are very narrow, so you can barely walk through them. If, if somebody came in the oncoming direction, you would have to, to get around them. These people over here have put up a tarp to, to be like a portal. Um, but I think that the, the thing to do is to just say that the entire plaza should have portals. And I don't know how that can get worked out. It could be that the government builds all the portals to begin with. Uh, it could be like in Bologna, Italy, they have a law where, or they had a law at some point, where any space that was over the sidewalk, you wouldn't have to pay taxes on it. And so people did that all through the town, apparently. I've never been. but. And so that was a tax incentive that caused people to build portals all around the plazas and streets. And therefore you get better sidewalk cafes and all that. They should be way wider than these ones. The ones in Aranga are way wider. And so you've got, you know, people in, in eating their quesadillas and things. And there's a little bit of a private space versus public space, like private business ownership issue with public space. But that can all be arranged. And this is hard to retrofit, right? Retrofitting is expensive and bad. Uh, what you want to do is have a good design up front. So we've got the idea of the, of the lower portals figured out. I actually want to go a step further, and I want to go for upper portals. So the second floor should be portals as well. And that way different kinds of businesses can be up there. I mean, your dentist doesn't need to be on the main plaza. And then, you know, let's say you had a portal over here. You get a private portal over here, right? That's a private uh, porch. There are no public portals in this entire plaza. But if there was a, a bunch, uh, you know, entire, just as part of the plan, an entire second floor of all portals, then all of that land becomes more useful. And people like to be dense, not with the pandemic at the moment. And this is 2021. But, um, they, they like more opportunities closer, you know, and those portals up there would have a little bit better view and could have different types of businesses than the ones in the bottom. You could even on the corners, higher, higher than a truck would be, run 
uh, kitty corner crosswalks so that you've got portals connected all the way on the second floor as well. And then various places could have uh, upper plazas or third floors, uh, which could be private residence, it could be a, a restaurant with a view. Uh, and you might even decide, depending on the direction of the sun, where you want to approve that level of height. Of course, you want to build with really good materials. Uh, there could be earthquakes here. And so we want to, if we're going to do this, not evolve the, the buildings as we do now, right? Like people build adobe and then they might put concrete on top of it. I hope that doesn't happen very much. But it wasn't designed to be earthquake proof very well. It was evolved. And that's okay. It, evolution produces really great results over the long term. In particular, it can teach us things that then we can copy. You know, you've heard of biomimicry, right? Where we can look at natural systems and animals and plants and then mimic how they do things. Uh, all the heating and cooling should be handled really well for all these buildings, where if it's too cold, then we can heat them with hot water heaters, solar hot water heaters. They don't use any energy if you do them right totally easy to do um, the this particular plaza here is a little short on plants in my opinion like I had a hard time finding a shady spot to sit now I could find commercial spots to sit maybe or, or public ones um, if there was a paragola here if there was spots along if there was a portal that was deeper so I guess I'm you know kind of critical of this of this plaza and not because of the people here they're awesome as far as I can tell uh, they, got a, they do have a fountain over there. A fountain is great for a little bird life. Um, in this particular plaza, the tree that they have is the jacaranda. They're all jacarandas. And I think the jacarandas lose all their leaves at part of the year here. That's terrible. And I think, I forget when they lose their leaves, but, but um, you want lots of shade. You know, have sunny spots, of course. No problem. Uh, but... But like, for example, there's ash trees in Pot Squirrel. They're huge, and that, it makes a great thing in the plaza to have these huge ash trees. Another nice thing about ash trees is when they get too big, you can just chop them, and then they keep growing. They don't die. So what else did we notice? Uh, the mix of businesses is really interesting in this town. Um, this is a semi-touristy town where people come in to buy things, but still, on the, on the main plaza here, there's like, you know, beauty shops and things that are for locals. So that's kind of nice to see a mix. Um, I do like the pot squirrel solution of having a one touristy plaza that's expensive and, and stuff. And then there's the kind of locals plaza with the market and, and hardware stores and things like that. So um, you never know what kind of goofballs, of course, you're going to run into in a place like this. So I'm out of my element. And... Uh, it's just fun when you go to a place, I think, to think about, like, what could it be? And, and not that this town should change hardly anything. I mean, all these, all these things are going to have their roofs ripped off, and there'll be the cost of retrofitting. But if we actually design them good or well from the beginning, then the entire economy and lifestyle of the place would be much more comfortable. It would be cheaper for people. Another thing that I find I, I want to add is... Uh, most of these buildings have their own stairway to get up inside the, the upper story of the building. I think that's not real great. Um, I would rather see public things that go up to the third story of buildings, if there is one, but certainly in the second one. And that way there's less total square footage, vertical footprint of stairs per building because stairs are kind of a waste. Also, when people build narrow stairways in, in personal places, private locations, they often make them too narrow. And why not just have bigger covered ones that are, are public and build out of stone, they'll last forever. Um, safer probably if you plan them right. So, what else about a little town like this? It's a great size plaza. Uh, I like the Aranga Plaza size a little more. It's a little bit bigger. Um, especially if you were to densify the edges, if you were gonna have all these portals, you would have more people coming in and out of the plaza. And so it might be nice to have more interior space in the plaza for people to relax or eat their lunch or, or record videos. Uh, 
making stuff up about architecture. I'm not even an architect, but I play one on this video. Bye. There could be some nice amenities in some plazas. Uh, the community could provide Wi-Fi and they could block sites that uh, use more bandwidth, you know. They could even leave like the site to upload YouTube videos open and block the rest of YouTube. And they could block games, block Pornhub probably, uh, but make it so that everybody has kind of access to the basics, you know, Gmail, things like that, Wikipedia. Those don't use much bandwidth anyway. That would benefit all the businesses around here because you'd have one system that was providing more bandwidth that was shared among businesses. Seems like a nice amenity. On the other hand, it's a little annoying to have people on their phones all the time. But some people have phone contracts and they're going to do that anyway, right? So the people you're helping are actually people who are from other countries who don't have a phone contract here maybe. Uh, or maybe people who are poorer and don't have their own thing because it's like, you know, they're all going to flock here and I, I don't know what would happen, what the effect of public Wi-Fi is. Um, there was an attempt some years ago to put in government public Wi-Fi at, I think, federal level in many places. It did not last long and it didn't work well. I prefer efforts like that to be made by, uh, you know, these people, the people right here. These are the people that are going to benefit from it. And, you know, younger folks who don't want to pay for a phone contract. I know people like that. And they can get online. And, you know, and one of the reasons I'm pro Wi-Fi isn't so that people spend all their life in their phone, but so that they learn more, so that they read more, they become more literate. Uh, I think that's beneficial for the whole place. Another big topic for any shared space like this is rules and rules of correct behavior, like don't litter, you know. Uh, th probably the biggest one for me is noise. Uh, towns are very noisy, and that can be changed. Right now there is no music objects playing in this plaza, and I have been in plazas about this size where there's a jukebox over there, a jukebox over there, and a business is playing music over there, and cars are going by with loudspeakers on top, advertising shit at you. That's terrible. That's awful. Somebody, some people, decide that they're going to use all the shared audio channel to advertise to things that maybe 1% of the people want. And it just, un at an underlying level, disturbs the peace. You know, it's obnoxious and it's inefficient. If people want to find things in this world now with smartphones and everything, you can advertise in other methods. Talking, people are going to talk. Some talking right there. I don't mind, I'm talking. Um, but, you know, probably yelling and stuff isn't very polite. Um, I'm not a big fan of rockets for parties, those go off a lot, but you know, it's part of the culture, as is anything I'm talking about. I know there'll be somebody who thinks I'm being a judgmental prick because I'm evaluating a space, but I evaluate any space anywhere in the world. I'm a citizen of the world, and I'm not telling anyone what to do. I'm going to leave here, no one will even know, I haven't even said the name of this town yet. No one will even know what I ever thought, but I will share the thoughts with people who might want to hear them, and in particular, people who design new spaces, because uh, there's a lot of benefits. Some laws, I mean, I, I'm against having too many laws, I really am. Uh, dogs here run free, and you'll see dead dogs by the side of the road. And uh, there's a surprising lack of dog shit, I'm not sure why that is, but um, I like that they run around, you know, and, and the dogs in the kinds of towns I've been in around here, they're not real skinny and starving and stuff, and they're pretty happy looking dogs overall, and they have owners, and some of them are market dogs who just get their food, and uh, they're serving food over there, uh, like tacos and quesadillas. And so some of the dogs get their food there from scraps. That's fine, and they cleaned up the scraps. That's great. 
Um, and I do like the idea of these outdoor food markets where you have very small vendors. Uh, also, when you look at the economics of a place like this, uh, it's nice if you have spaces available where people can start out as very small vendors. You know, you don't, you don't, I don't think I would want the whole plaza to end up being fancy places where the cost to, to get into the economic system is really high. I like that there's small places that people can try things out. I like that people can have carts of food, you know, and there's no health issue with that. They've changed laws finally in L.A. that they allow that. And it's like nobody's trying to poison you with their popsicle, you know. There's a popsicle place right over there. I could go get a popsicle right now. I don't even know if they have a license. It doesn't matter. And you shouldn't have to go to 17,000 years of popsicle school to be able to make a popsicle. Or to get a haircut either, you know. I mean, maybe there's rules. I, I don't know details of everything. Like maybe like to color someone's hair, you should be more trained. I had my, color, hair, my, my hair colored and it did kind of burn me but I lived and and so the freedom to open and close businesses um, and be an unofficial business about half the work I guess in Mexico is on the unofficial economy uh, for some kinds of people that they would think oh that's terrible they got to pay taxes and all this stuff and it's like some of these people are so poor and and so not in the big economy that you'll, you'll, you'll kick them out of the economy if you set up too many rules for them and so these tiny places like this have a lot more economic fluidity. Um, and, and they don't have so many regulations, and therefore they don't have so many regulators. And like, I haven't seen a policeman the whole time I've been here. I've seen policemen in Mexico. You know, some of them got big guns and stuff, and they ride around in trucks. But I suspect this is a pretty mellow town that doesn't generally have a lot of problems. They have an income by selling things to outside people. They've got uh, their local industries where they make things here. Uh, they got on this plaza a pretty wide variety of businesses, most of which are serving locals actually, because they've got a street that goes down that way, and all their crafty crafty things are on that street. So you could also, with your design of a town, kind of pick and choose what parts of town are good for what. Now certain things can be spread out a lot, and that's fine. Uh, there are some odd things about being here where sometimes all the things of a certain type will be in one place. All the shoe stores, one place. And that's actually good if you're looking for shoes. It keeps competition happening. Um, other kinds of businesses you kind of want spread around town, like the abarotes, the little grocery stores. I see one over there and one over there. That one didn't have what I wanted. This one did have what I wanted. And, and often other blocks around town, you'll ha have abarote, so grocery stores as well. Uh, most of the stuff they sell is crap. By my standards, you know, candy and junk food, but I don't mind a, a beer on a day like this. It's a nice thing. And, um, so what else can we think about? What else would make this into a more pleasant place? They've got the fountain going over here. It wasn't going last time I was here. And you could definitely make sure your fountain is bird friendly. Um, you could even put in some bird houses. Uh, I'm not sure why that's that important, but pretty birds make things sound better. We were talking about rules, weren't we? Yeah, I'd get parking off the plaza as much as possible. Freedom semi-anarchy seems to actually work really well here. It's astounding. People can drive by in the back of a pickup truck because economically that is far better than not allowing that. And you'd have to, you know, the equation. People do die probably. There probably is accidents. But I bet you drivers are real careful when they got their people in the back of the truck and I grew up in the back of the truck. I was in the back of the truck often going to town or up on mountain roads in the Olympic Peninsula. And so you've got to realize that all these regulations you create, every one of them has a cost. And if you add that all up, you could end up with a United States type place where everything is so damn regulated. 
Everything is regulated. You have no freedom in the land of the free. I'm freer here. Now, is there other kind of chaos? Are there, you know, here? Yeah, there is. It's, it's not totally safe. And there could be like a big hole in the ground in the sidewalk and you could fall into it. Uh, you know, there's not going to be cones and ribbons around it. But you have to wake up and be smart enough not to fall in the hole. And that takes some adjusting. You know, and nobody's perfect. But trying to make a perfectly safe world where no one ever gets hurt hurts everybody real bad. And it makes them weaker. So I haven't walked around that much in this town. And of course, I'm walking real slow these days. But um, I think it's a, it's a one of my more favorite little towns, other than my favorite towns I live near, which are obviously the best in the world. But uh, this town seems to have a good model for how they're running things. It's almost like uh, if I had a town like this or I was involved with a community like this, I would want to go to the sides of town and build new plazas. Because that's one thing I don't like about here is that they made the plaza, they made the church, and then it just gets all paved out from that. And I think that every, you know, that every four blocks you should be making the new plazas. Now, you can't do that now, here. Uh, it's too late, because you'd have to tear someone's house down, and you know, adverse possession and evil stuff like that. But you could look at, on the outsides of town where it's just fields, because all these towns just kind of end, and it becomes just nothing. But you could, on different sides of the town, draw out. If your town was to grow, and they usually do, how would you design a far better plaza system and park system on all four sides of town, if that's appropriate? Or how would you maximize the use of wherever the road comes through? How could you reroute the road so it, big trucks don't go through your town, and big trucks are rerouted around um, how could you have spaces outside of town where the big trucks that supply the town have bodegas and a Mercado de Abastos and all that? That's a very useful thing to do. And that's thinking ahead. And, you know, that would take some doing. It would, you know, you'd have to buy land from people. Uh, and you don't know if that investment of a better plaza would work out. But guess what it would? I, I've thought about this stuff so much. This would then be the old plaza. This is old town, and it would probably even become, over time, maybe a little more touristy, or or the other one would, or who knows how things develop. Um, hopefully, it would be better. But what's better? It's working great now, you know. And better is certainly not what tourists think. You know, it's what the community here thinks. Use some bike racks, maybe. Bicycling is a great thing for any town, especially this one's relatively flat. It's very flat. Um, and so you could think about that. Another thing with rules is you could actually try and encourage uh, electric cars. Now, I'm not a big fan of electric cars because I think they're a fake solution to the world's problems. They still have problems with batteries that are improving, of course, but they're toxic. The electricity still comes from bad sources like coal and gas primarily. So just because it's electric in your car doesn't mean that's where the electricity came from. In fact, it could be less efficient to convert it um, from gasoline to electricity and then back to movement. And, and so there's a lot of these false, dis false solutions that people have. Uh, the benefit, the huge benefit, is electric cars are quieter which is also dangerous so but they could get smarter too so they could watch out for people better you know self-driving cars and all that um, but there are a lot of places that suffer from uh, a lot of car pollution Mexico City but even smaller places you know it's just I mean I live in a forest it's really nice the air is very nice there only time it's bad is if there's a forest fire nearby or at the Bosque and so Electric cars could still be a good choice. This, this town doesn't seem real noisy with a lot of cars, but um, we could reduce deaths from, uh, from air pollution, asthma, stuff like that. 
So that might be good. Now, I don't know how you encourage electric cars in a way that's not totally fascist. Um, you could stop, see, even stopping subsidizing gasoline wouldn't really do the trick uh, because the electricity is still coming from the gasoline. Of course, somebody's going to say you switch to, switch to uh, nuclear. Not a big fan. I think the big win is always conservation. Very hard for us to do. Uh, they do great here, though. Uh, the amount of energy used in a town like this for the number of people here is colossally lower than in the United States of America, where I come from, at least in most places. So, <sighs> Don't forget, hit me up with your cool ideas on how you developed the awesomest town. There goes the church. Church bells. Oh, and then you need public meeting spaces, of course. Churches fill that function partly now, but I don't like that they're all, you know, lined up to serve God. It doesn't exist. I'd love it if they had some monolithic domes or something. Um, you could even have a market in the lower level with a 70-foot dome. And then your temperature could always be comfortable for a huge number of people. Um, this happens to have pretty mild climate here, so it's not too bad. But if you're down on the coast, it's sweltering, swelteringly hot. And so you could easily cool it down with minimal air conditioning. I'm against air conditioning, but I'm against, I'm in favor of the best use of resources. And so a public space that was comfy could be awesome. And then you've got deserts where it's too hot and it's too cold. And uh, those, of course, would also benefit from a super insulated structure that had uh, very minimal systems for heating or cooling cost of ownership for the community would plummet and they can all get together uh, not during the pandemic um, but they can get together as a community more easily and that'd be just a fantastic shared resource for the town another thing i'll mention as we evaluate this little town is that they don't have forest fires here i mean sorry they don't have house fires here uh, and that's because almost everything is built with brick and stone now, it is true that if you work real hard, you could catch your building on fire somehow. But they barely have a fire department uh, in the towns I know of around here. And that just gets rid of this terrible thing that could occur, especially if you're, if you're having your buildings so densely together where they would just keep catching other buildings on fire. Um, but they're not made out of sticks. They're not made out of wood. Um, there's some wood in the ceilings of some of them as beams. Uh, many of the ceilings are entirely concrete, which is just great. And so that's a huge benefit, is don't make your town so it's going to burn down, or it will burn down, and then you'll be sad. Very small detail for a, a town like this is uh, some different transportation culture. Now, bicycles, of course, are awesome, and they're the most efficient way to transport things. Um, Two-wheeled bicycles are not wieldy for some people. And so three-wheeled bicycles for selling things or moving things or even four-wheeled ones. You know, you could have pedicabs. Um, they could have electric assist on them. You know, there's a lot of fusion things we can do here as solutions. So, you know, it would be really cool to have more businesses have carts, you know, available. Maybe you rent a cart. Maybe you own your own cart. But moving things around with carts is really a great way to go because, we, again, we want to reduce reliance on vehicles, of gasoline vehicles or electric vehicles. A lot of these little towns do have vehicles that come to the town and sell things right out of their vehicle. Works great. Right now, I'm, I'm spending almost all my time in the forest and to buy fresh fruits and veggies, fresh fruits and veggies, you know, I got some in the gardens, but that's limited and so I go to a little town and there's a truck there and they actually call me they say hey we're here and then I can buy fruits and veggies from them uh, direct from the general state here the, the relatively local area an improvement that could be made on that system since everyone has smartphones now is that people could subscribe to where a vendor is Right now when they come into town, a lot of them do big announcements, some of them beep and have speakers, 
And so to get them what they want and the customers what they want, uh, you could just subscribe on an app, hopefully an open source app. And you could say, yeah, I want to know when the gas truck comes through. Um, or I want to know when the, the ice cream truck comes through or the fruits and veggies truck. And that actually helps them sell more easily and the customers spend less time waiting around or being confused about when things are available or not wanting to leave the house because they need something. So that would be a great a combination of a low-tech lifestyle with the highest-tech coordination of human behavior.